before anyone gets in the comments box to ask, these are from an Etsy seller called Just One More Chapter and I will link their page down in the description. It's that time of year when everyone is doing their favourites of videos and so I'm doing my list of favourite books of the year. I read 100 books in 2016. Before I get on to the novels I'm just going to quickly mention this play Peter and Alice by John Logan. I went into this with quite high expectations because of what Jen Campbell had said about it and everyone I know who's who's read this agrees that it's just it's th the emotional impact of this play is just incredible. It is about this imagined meeting between the the man who was the child who inspired P uh, Jay and Barry to write Peter Pan and the, the woman who was the girl who inspired Lewis Carroll or Charles Dodson to write Alice in Wonderland. And they did meet at one point in real life, um, but th this is the, the imagined meeting and um, discussion that they have about what these characters have meant to them and how their lives have been completely moulded by them. So next up we have two poetry collections and a short story collection. The poetry are both by Kate Tempest, so we've got Hold Your Own, which I read for the first time this year, and her very latest one, which is called Let Them Eat Chaos. And I, I loved Hold Your Own, I thought that it was fantastic, there were some poems in here that really really spoke to me. But then when I read this one, this is even even more. This is very much a collection and there are things that tie in one poem to the next and there's an overarching theme but this one is one poem and to me it was like a sort of modern version of Eliot's The Wasteland um, but just so much more affecting for me at least. I read this at just the right time as well because I had a really busy day, quite a stressful day and then this arrived and I, I just had to read it immediately and I'm so glad that I did. I read it in one sitting which I would definitely recommend you doing and it's the kind of thing that you just want to read out loud to yourself as well and you, you can really sort of chew on on the words. Uh, I just think that Kate Tempest is utterly fantastic. The short story collection is Julie Orange's How to Breathe Underwater and I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did. It it's a, has a lot to do with childhood which is not something that I usually enjoy I, or at least I don't really enjoy books about motherhood or where, where parenthood is is one of the the main things because that's not something that I especially connect to but this just reminded me of what it's like to be a child and it kind of reminded me of the way that Catherine Mansfield writes about childhood as well um, which is about the highest praise I could possibly give this. It's got these twists in there that you just completely do not see coming and while each story is different they all have this kind of childlike worldview to them and the children in them are, are different ages but I, I I just really felt like I connected to all of them even though they're very different and every single story was a gem and I, I just wanted more so I think that's the, that's the sign of a really good collection of short stories. This next book is also very very haunting. Loney by Andrew Michael Hurley. It's about two brothers, one is is mute and has learning disabilities and the other is, is sort of his his protector. He, he looks after him. And as cliched as it is to say it, I feel like the third character in this is the lonely itself, the the desolate setting where where this book mainly takes place. It, it's another great one to read in winter. I, I read it, uh, I think it was towards the end of the winter and I remember listening to the audiobook while I was putting a fire on and it was just the, the perfect kind of atmosphere to read it in. So if you want something to, to read this, this winter, um, I, I would definitely, definitely recommend this one. Arcadia by Ian Pears, and this is one that I read for a book club. I didn't want my expectations to be too high because it had been sort of, it's, it sounded like, when you read the blurb, it sounded like his dark materials in many ways. And this may actually be the closest thing in terms of subject matter and themes that I've found to, to his dark materials. It, it has different worlds in there, it has uh, a cat that disappears, which kind of reminded me of both 
his dark materials and the cast at the beginning of the subtle knife but also reminded me of Murakami quite a bit it's one of those books that I really want to to reread as well because I think you get a lot more out of it on on a second read um, but it, it also reminded me of of David Mitchell and these sort of different different timelines it's a it's a fantastic book and it's it's quite underrated as well the next book is also quite similar in many ways to Arcadia um, in that it's got a sense of ambiguity and at, at one point of the plot you start going oh hang on I'm not quite sure what, what's actually happening here it's the ecliptic by Benjamin Wood and I listened to this one as an audiobook as well a lot of images from this book have stuck with me and again it's one that I want to to reread and it's another one that's full of ambiguity it's about a group of artists who are on this island this uh, another very isolated desolate place and they are, are supposedly there to do their own projects and they're being sponsored to to be there and, and create stuff but the, there's something else going on and something quite sinister and there are, there are some flashbacks it's quite brilliant uh, like I say I want to reread it and I, I think that's the case for most of these books actually that the ones that I feel I can well that, that I could reread and get more out of same goes for this next one the garden of evening mists by Tan Twang Eng and another one that is very very atmospheric maybe that's just the the kind of vibe that I was going for with with favorite books this year this one is about a woman who was a survivor of a prisoner of war camp during the second world war and it is about her wish to create a, a Japanese style garden and 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 that's that was her her sister's dream and her sister was, was killed in this in this war camp so she's trying to come to terms with her hatred of of the Japanese following the second world war and also her sister's wishes to create this Japanese garden and she meets a, a Japanese style gardener and it, it's about her journey and her, her journey to reconciliation but also we get these flashbacks and find out what happened back in the in in the camp and it's it's beautifully written Tan Tuang En does does a fantastic job of of painting this this picture I mean I can I can picture the garden in in my head and because you're not given all the information straight away it's it's sort of eked out th throughout the story and it, it's it's done in such a way that you want to just keep reading okay so the next one is one that has, has had very mixed reviews on goodreads it's, it's a bit of a marmite book and i think a lot of people didn't didn't like this but i absolutely loved it again probably read it at the right time uh, it's it's set in summer and i read it during summer it really got me it's hot milk by deborah levy and this was the first book by her that i had read and I love 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 the way that she writes it's about this this woman who goes to Spain with her mother and her mother is a hypochondriac and is trying to get treatment for this illness that she supposedly has and to be honest not a lot actually happens in this book but it was written so well that I didn't care and it, it's really a, a psychological portrait of, of this woman and, and how she's dealing with her relationship with her mother and she's got a lot of issues herself. This is the, the final book and I listened to this as an audiobook but this this is the, the illustrated edition and it's, it's The Lie Tree by Frances Harding, the winner of the overall Costa Prize. So the audiobook is narrated by Amelia Fox who you might know from the British television show silent witness she's she's great has a wonderful voice for narrating this and it's one of the few books that i didn't listen to at super fast speed i i think i only listened to it at 1.5 speed because her narration is just so good and it, it's too good to, to miss and i got to the end of the book and thought oh okay so what am i going to read after this and i immediately went back to the beginning and and re-listened to it it was it was just that good as you may know it set me off on a, a a series of reads books which were about women as as scientists uh and basically what i was doing reading those was chasing the high of of this book that this book gave me and i 
I sadly didn't find it in any of those books. I found similar themes and it, it was really interesting to, to see the the way that different authors dealt with similar subject matter but this this was really the best and it's it's a children's book it's it's kind of a I put it either in the 9 to 12 section or in the um, into teen fiction probably more into teen but I think it's one of those ones that you could read from probably about the age of eight and you would get something from it it's a similar reading age in many ways to his dark materials which i first read about that time i was eight or nine you you would then reread this later on in life and you get just so much more from it the story at its base is is very interesting and engaging the characters are very interesting and engaging um but yeah there are lots of different layers in there uh, to do with with sort of women's rights and, and feminism and and early feminists and this, this is set in Victorian times a lot to do with religion as well and religion versus science I can't recommend this enough and I think if you like his dark materials there are lots of similarities and I would recommend it for a similar audience and of course now you can get this beautiful edition which is illustrated and this was very kindly sent to me by um, Pam McMillan I just I just love the the illustrations I think that Chris Riddell's style really just captures these characters very very well let me know down in the comments what your favorite books of the year were um or if you have read any of these and if you have any thoughts of whether you love them as well or whether you maybe didn't love them quite so much as always thank you very much for watching happy new year and i'll see you in the next one bye